this is lecture 15. So, in the previous lecture, we started our study of finite fields. Okay, and uh, we saw the following things. So, we saw that for every integer n greater than or equal to 1, there is a unique field k with k lying between f p and f p bar such that. So, let me just underline this unique such that the extension degree of k over f p is equal to n that is the first that thing that we saw and secondly the way we constructed k was we constructed k as the set of all roots of the equation x to the power p to the power n minus x equal to 0 roots of this equation in f p bar. Okay, yeah. So, note that this n is the same as this n appearing here. Okay. So, I just want to emphasize that. Then another thing we saw was that the group k cross, this is k minus 0, this multiplicative group uh, is cyclic of order p to the power n minus 1. Okay. And in particular, this shows that k is equal to f p adjoint alpha, where we can take alpha to be any generator of the cyclic group k cross. Okay. And uh, okay. So if okay, let me make this next point here. If alpha is in FP bar, right? So uh, then as alpha belongs to K for some finite extension k of f p, uh, it follows that there exists an n greater than or equal to 1 such that alpha is a root of the polynomial. x to the power p to the power n minus x. Okay, so I we emphasize that this polynomial need not be be irreducible. We only know that alpha is a root of this polynomial. Okay. So, uh, but then, as when we apply this derivation on x to the power p to the power n minus x, this is this constant polynomial minus one, which never vanishes, which does not vanish, which has no roots. Let me put it that way. 
roots, it follows that the equation or the polynomial x to the power p to the power n minus x has no repeated roots. Right? Here we are using the criterion that a polynomial p of x has alpha as a repeated root if and only if well alpha has to be a root of p of x and also it has to be a root of this derivation d of p of x. Yeah? So, we are using that criteria here. Uh, so, in particular if p of x is the irreducible polynomial of of alpha then then as p of x divides x to the power p to the power n minus x it follows that p of x has no repeated roots Yeah, but now p of x is the irreducible polynomial of alpha over f p of alpha over f p right in particular thus alpha is separable over f p and since this, since this happens for every alpha in f p bar so this implies that f p bar is separable Okay. So, then another thing we defined was that there is a Frobenius automorphism automorphism which we denoted the Frobenius from f p bar to f p bar. So, this is given by x goes to x power p. Okay. So, last time we only defined it for finite extensions, but obviously this definition makes sense. The only thing that we need to check is that this is an automorphism that is this surjective. When k over f p was a finite extension, we checked that it is surjective, but that is obvious because Frobenius is an injective map and k it is a k is a finite field. Yeah. So, therefore, the injectivity will also force that it is surjective, right. but in case of f p bar so, we can give like we can argue this in several ways, but here is a simple argument. So, to show surjectivity, uh, let alpha belong to f p bar, then there is a finite extension k containing alpha. So, then we have a commutative diagram So, we have f p bar to f p bar this is the Frobenius and this contains k right. So, we know that this is surjective, this is surjective, yeah, because I just mentioned the argument for that a few minutes ago because k is a finite field and the Frobenius is an injective map, yeah. So, therefore, it is forced to be surjective, right. So, therefore, this implies that alpha is in the image of Frobenius. So, we pick any alpha over here, it belongs to some k over here and then since Frobenius is surjective at the level of k, it means that alpha is in the image of alpha is actually Frobenius of some beta in k. So, in particular, it is also the image of this beta over here. Okay. So, or if you like 
I can just give some details. So, since Frobenius from k to k is surjective, this implies there exists beta in k such that Frobenius of beta is alpha. Right, but that is exactly what we want to show, yeah, that there is some beta, it is in k, so it is also in fp bar, right. Okay. So, we have defined this automorphism and uh, so now, so yeah, so this is indeed an automorphism and when we restrict Frobenius to a finite extension k, we saw that it is a element, it is an element of this automorphism k over fp. which has order n which is the extension degree. Moreover, we also saw that the cardinality of this group of automorphisms is equal to n which proves that this automorphism group is actually the cyclic group ge generated by the Frobenius and this isomorphic to z mod n z. Okay. So, these things we had proved last time. So, uh, now we are going to So, and okay. So, last time I had said that we will see the Galois correspondence for finite fields and we are going to do that. We are going to begin uh, the new thing we are going to do today is that. So, for that first we need the following. So, let H contained in odd. So, th this is the setup let k be a finite extension and let this extension degree be n. Okay. So, for a subgroup h contained in odd k over fp Uh, we define the following subfield. So, k h there is defined to be those alpha in k which are fixed by all elements of h. Okay. Yeah. So, remember that ought k over fp, it consisted of those automorphisms sigma from k to k such that sigma restricted to fp is the identity. In other words, this diagram commutes. Okay. So, we can take any subgroup h inside this automorphisms and we can ask what are the elements of k which are fixed by the subgroup. Okay. For instance, we can take sigma to be, for example, take h equal to the identity subgroup. Yeah. So, what does that mean? 
So, then what is k sub h? Right. k sub h is those alpha and k such that this identity of alpha is equal to alpha. Right. But this is every every element of k is preserved by the identity. Right. So, this is just k. Similarly, if we take H, okay, we'll come to that later. Uh, yeah, yeah, let me mention that right now. Okay, so this, uh, so as a result, so using, yeah, so this gives a map as follows. So, we have subgroups of automorphism k over f p. Given a subgroup, we get two subfields E says that E lies between f p and k. Okay, so, what is this given a subgroup H? I just send it to all those elements in k which are fixed by h, which are fixed by all elements of h. Okay. And we want to claim, our claim is, we claim that this map is a bijection. Offsets. Okay, that is what we want to prove. Yeah. So, in order to prove this, so in order to prove this, we need the following lemma. So, we are taking an extension, we are taking let k be the unique extension of degree n and let e be the unique extension of degree m. Okay. Then e is a subfield of k if and only if m divides n. So, let us prove this. If E is a subfield of K, then clearly, then we have F P is contained in E is contained in K and then using the degree formula. So, this implies that the degree of extension K over F P is equal to K over E times E over F which implies that n which is the degree of extension of k over f p is equal to k over e times m. Right? So, this shows that m divides n. Okay? Conversely, let us assume that n is equal to m times t, right. Okay. So, recall that E, which is the unique extension of degree m was defined as the roots of those alpha in f p bar such that alpha to the power p to the power m is equal to alpha. Right. 
the unique extension of degree m is obtained as the roots of the polynomial x to the power p to the power m minus x equal to 0. Yeah? And similarly, k is equal to alpha in fp bar says that alpha to the power p to the power n is equal to alpha. Yeah. So, to show that E is contained in K, we just have to show that every element is contained in K. Yeah. So, now, if alpha belongs to E, so what does this mean? This implies that alpha to the power p to the power m is equal to alpha. So, I can raise both sides to p to the power m. alpha to the power p to the power m, but alpha to the power p to the power m is equal to alpha and this implies that alpha to the power p to the power 2 m is equal to alpha. Yeah. So, now again we can raise both sides, sorry. This implies alpha to the power p to the power 3 m is equal to alpha and going on like this we get that alpha to the power p to the power d times m is equal to alpha which implies alpha to the power p to the power n is equal to alpha right which implies that alpha belongs to k right so thus e is contained in k and this proves completes the proof of the proposition. Okay, so, we will end here and like after 5 minutes, we will show that prove the, prove that the correspondence we defined earlier is indeed bijective.